Well, welcome back for example number two. Um, we're going to be, I'm sorry about that, we're going to be talking about once again how to sketch a rational function. Um, we're going to identify the x-intercepts and any asymptotes um, with its continuities and all other cool getting you stuff. So, without further ado, let us begin. We are talking about this rational function right here. And rational functions are really cool because they have many key features, such as x-intercepts, all right, vertical asymptotes. I'm going to call this one a VA, vertical asymptote. We have horizontal asymptotes, and they may have slanted asymptotes. This one does not, um, but we can look for slanted asymptotes, um, slanted asymptotes. And also, we may have some holes that we might be looking at. Um, removal just kind of doing so. I'll put the hole up here. That's a little bit of rope. All right, which is also known as removable. Discontinuity. Discontinuity. Okay. So, with that, um, the first thing is usually what I do is whenever I have a rational function, especially when it has many, appears that it may have some different factors, I first factor it out. Um, it helps me identify better all of the different things I need to do to graph it. So, from these, I'm going to factor out the top, the numerator, and I have 3x, and I have x plus 5. And there's my first factor of the sorry, numerator. Then I do the denominator, and I have x plus 5, and I have x minus 1. Okay, it um, appears that is correct. Now, when you do this, um, the key thing is we always want to look for holes first. Okay, and the previous example went through and it didn't have any holes. Um, because holes are, help you, possibly will screw you up in finding the x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes. Because a hole, um, is an undefined value, it's an undefined value, like a vertical asymptote, um, but it's a common factor but it, in the numerator denominator. Okay, So in a rational function, it has a common factor in the numerator denominator. In this case, you can identify that this common factor happens to be x plus 5. So x plus 5, normally we'd think, oh, this can be canceled out, um, which you can cancel out, but you wouldn't. Um, because it's still an undefined value. But you take that common factor and you set it equal to zero, and that's the location of your hole. So we have a hole right here at negative five. To find the y value of this hole, um, we take our factor and we do cancel it, and we just plug that negative five into the remaining values. So we take the negative five and plug it into the x of the remaining part without the common factor. So then I take negative five minus one, and we have negative 15 and negative 6, and so we have this 15 over 6, all right, over 6, all right, which is generally right around 2 something, okay, so that's our value, that's where our hole is going to be, our open circle, so at negative 5, all right, from there, I can find the remaining portions of my um, other stuff, all right, the other stuff or key features that I'm referring to are the x-intercept, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and slanted asymptotes, all right, if there are any. So now we go and take, after this common factor has been kind of eliminated, kind of eliminated, all right, we now look at the remaining factors, and we find the x-intercepts, or zeros. Now zeros are when the function equals zero, which then means when is a fraction equal to zero, that's when the numerator equals zero. So I take 3x and set equal to zero. I get rid of the hole because the hole is undefined. So from here I find out we have a zero at zero. So I go over here. And I'm going to plot this graph, a little sketch right here. And I'm going to plot a 0 at 0. Let me get that right there. All right, now I go over my vertical asymptote. Um, and from here, I'm going to look at my denominator because a vertical asymptote is an undefined value, which is not a whole. All right, and so we look at the denominator. So a fraction is undefined when the denominator equals 0. So we take our factor in the denominator, which is that, and we find out we get a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So we write a vertical line at x equals 1. Like so. All right. And there's our vertical line. x equals 1. It's a vertical asymptote. We have that. Um, I now look to see if I have any horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes, I look at the degrees, all right, the leading degree of my numerator compared to my denominator. And notice they are equal. Now, because horizontal asymptotes are end behaviors, I need to figure out what's happening when we go to infinity, and where is my y going when I go to negative infinity. Well, since they grow at the same rate, 
the leading coefficients all right, of my rational function is going to be my horizontal asymptote. And it's going to be the same for both sides. And so I have 3 over 1, um, which equals 3. So I do have a horizontal asymptote at 3. So I'm going to go over here and plot this at 3. And I have this, that, and 3 here. So, all right, so we have this right here. Because of the horizontal asymptote, a slanted asymptote is when your numerator is 1 degree greater than the denominator. And this is not the case, so we don't have any slanted asymptotes with the equation. So, over here, I got my negative 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's a hole somewhere over here. Um, 2 something. Um, 2, and I'll put it like right there. And we got this hole, and we have our test areas. I probably should region. We have region 1, all right, which I already kind of know is going to be positive because I know this hole, which is positive. And it goes down to all right, this value um, to my x-intercept. I then come to region 2, and I need to test the test point, so I can plug in 1 half. When I plug in 1 half, I get a positive value, then a negative value. So it is going to go keep on going down to this vertical asymptote, down to the negative region. The next region, which is R3, this far left side, we don't have any x-intercepts. And so I can't start negative to go to positive, because it needs to approach this horizontal asymptote. So just by logic, I know it's going to have to be positive, and it's going to have to look like so. Okay? Um, you can also do a test point, plug in 2, and 2 is going to be a positive value over a positive value, which gives you a positive region, and we have our graph that looks like that. So, once again, um, going through, in order to graph a rational function, we have to identify the x-intercepts, the holes, the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptotes, and slant asymptotes, if there are any. All right, plot those on a graph um, at the proper places and sketch them. Okay, we'll test out the regions, and there we have it. Hope this helps out, um, and we're going to probably do one more problem um, in a little bit.